The title of today's presentation is Utilising the Carbon Fibre Posterior Dynamic Element in KFO Prescription. My name is Darren Pereira and I'm the Principal Orthodist Adults at Neuromuscular Orthotics. I have a Bachelor of Applied Science, Prosthetics and Orthotics from La Trobe University, Melbourne, 1995. In today's presentation, we're going to look at the carbon fibre PDE and see how it's used in neurology. We're going to examine how the quadriceps are active in gait, have a look at a case study. We're going to show you a demonstration of a KFO walking cast, and we're going to look at PDE considerations in KFO. So what is the carbon fibre PDE? The carbon fibre PDE was designed and developed by the team at Fabtech Systems. The carbon fibre PDE comes in three different lengths, a 200 millimetre length, a 250 millimetre length, and a 300 millimetre length. In the 200 millimetre length, there are nine different categories of stiffness, nine different categories of stiffness in the 250 length, and seven different categories of stiffness in the 300 mil length. So how does the PDE influence gait in clients who have neurology? When a client lands in initial contact, the external ground reaction force passes posterior to the ankle, posterior to the knee, and anterior to the hip joint. At initial contact, tibialis anterior controls the rate of plantar flexion in loading response. The quadriceps control the rate of knee flexion in loading response, and gluteus maximus controls the rate of hip flexion in loading response. But what happens if you lose all muscle power in all groups below the knee? Let's have a look and see how the PDE spring performs under body weight. Here I am testing a category one spring in the 250 mil length, quite a flexible spring that allows plantar flexion in load response in comparison to a category five 300 mil spring that doesn't allow a, hardly any plantar flexion and then also doesn't allow a lot of dorsiflexion through stance phase. But the orthosis still tries to give you some rapid plantar flexion in late stance. Let's have a look at one of our below knee clients who has worn PDEs for approximately two years. Steve is a gentleman in his early 50s who has chronic demyelinating inflammatory neuropathy. He has no muscle power below the knee and was fitted with bilateral PDEs. Steve's particular category of spring that he preferred was a 250 mil category three spring. It allowed him enough ankle plantar flexion in loading response, but still at the same time controlled the rate of dorsiflexion to supplement his weak calf. Here we have Amelia, who's a young Australian lady who suffered a very severe stroke in 2014. Amelia also has muscle weakness, but the spasticity is masking a lot of that weakness in the limb. Here she was fitted with a below knee PDU orthosis, and Amelia's particular category of spring that she prefers is the category one in the 300 millimeter length. This particular spring choice for her allows her to have optimal ankle plantar flexion in loading response, while at the same time allowing controlled dorsiflexion without setting off her spastic gastroc reflex. Let's have a look at the case study for today. Jonathan is a 44 year old gentleman who was diagnosed with spina bifida as a child. The right leg was severely affected by the by the spina bifida and he has very little muscle power in any group below hip level. He has a very severe ankle instability and has had multiple fractures of the ankle and distal fibula over the years. His gastroc is tight and it can't be dorsiflexed past approximately five degrees of plantar flexion. In that position of five degrees of plantar flexion, the hind foot is still slightly inverted, but the forefoot and midfoot can be can be everted to assist with locking that ankle joint so it doesn't invert further. He has a genuricovatum of approximately five degrees on that right knee and he also has a genuverum. He wore a lock CAFO throughout his childhood and teenage years but discontinued use of the lock CAFO due to chronic lumbar spine and back pain on both the right and left side. Since those teenage years, he has used bilateral forearm crutches for limb stability and safety. Jonathan falls twice to three times a week as a result of knee flexion instability on, on uneven surfaces, stairs, ramps, etc. If we have a look at Jonathan's muscle power, you can see on that right side, very little muscle power in any groups. He has only a one plus in his glutes, 
and he has only a one plus in those hip abductors. So basically every single muscle group in that lower limb on that right side is significantly affected. Jonathan's goals are to stabilize the ankle at all times and minimize inversion injury and a possible fracture, provide knee stability on all surfaces, terrain during all functional activity, allow standing stability, improve walking fluency and efficiency, and have a decreased reliant on gait aids. Let's have a look at a fiberglass walking cast. This particular fiberglass walking cast technique was taught to me by Deanna Fish, who's a CPO at a Novacare Education Fair in San Diego in 1995. The walking cast was originally taught as a below knee system for the Oregon Orthotic System course. You, it immobilizes the ankle in a certain position and no ankle movement is allowed through gait. It allows for optimal ankle position for replication in a definitive orthosis. But it also tells us, if you immobilize the ankle, can the quads and glutes cope with an external knee and hip flexion moment at initial contact? And it also allows you to determine if the position of ankle dorsiflexion resistance optimizes limb stability in stance. Let's have a look at a C-brace CAFO walking cast on Jonathan. The first thing you must do is disconnect the C-brace and lateral upright from the Otterbock diagnostic test orthosis. Please note that this technique is not endorsed by Otterbock and is a neuromuscular orthotic technique. Something to consider before you start your walking cast, you have to consider the heel height of your client's shoe and you also have to consider what shank angle you're going to cast them in to generate a knee extension moment in the C-brace in late stance. Your first tibial wrap. Correct the limb optimally like you would in any below knee AFO cast. Your first wrap must start approximately one inch below your fibula head. Place a broad cutting strip across your ankle dorsum and pad any bony prominences that you think could be um, susceptible to pressure in the walking cast. Prior to your first wrap, I'd like you to consider what the uprights of that C-brace test structure looks like. And I'd like you to, on your C-brace setup software, place it in user-defined and decrease your basic flexion resistance to zero. After your first wrap has been done, on your second wrap, you want to wrap one layer from the ankle upwards. You need multiple support personnel to assist you. Turn the laser line on the, on the Otterbox C-brace knee joint. Place a bag over the C-brace knee joint. And with your laser line, you want your colleague to align that joint so it sits on the knee joint center of your client. Wrap over the upright with multiple layers and adhere the fiberglass to the inner layers of your first tibial wrap. By placing your user-defined with zero basic flexion resistance in zero, it allows you to flex and extend the upright of the C-brace knee joint to check your alignment along the, along the midline of the thigh. Continue adhering your fiberglass around the upright until it's cured. Now to the thigh section. Add a femoral cutting strip so that you can cut it off easily. Extend your joint so it's out of the way and you want to wrap a first layer over the thigh keep your bag over your C-brace knee joint flex the knee joint so it's in optimal alignment slide your first layers between the plastic bag over the C-brace knee joint and your inner wrap and start wrapping around the upright and slide layers between the plastic bag. Come across over the top of the proximal end of the upright to further trap and lock in the position of that upright. Continue to adhere the fiberglass layers until they, till they cure. With many hands on deck, keep wrapping around the upright because you, up, you want your upright to be completely trapped and not have movement. The laser pointer greatly assists in your knee joint alignment. And we keep this on for the duration. And there we have the completed walking cast with the shoe over the top. You get one chance to optimize your shank position, so really think about your client prior to the wrapping. 
Remember to ensure an optimal C brace troll, you need an extension moment in the joint in late stance. Consider a slightly reclined shank with respect to the heel height of the shoe. And if needed, use a heel, an internal heel raise to bring the tibia forward. The first client trial starts with determining optimal knee flexion resistance from stand to sit. This particular unit of stance flexion resistance is also the same unit of resistance for standing, for descending stairs and descending ramps. This is also an important measure because if your client doesn't reach an extension moment in stance phase, this is the same amount of resistance that the client will experience in swing phase in the knee joint. So they won't achieve free knee flexion in swing if they don't hit that extension moment. So let's have a look at jo Jonathan walking in this walking cast. The solid ankle walking cast provides a very large knee and hip flexion moment. It is simulating how a solid AFO and GRAFO would function in a C brace. The solid AFO doesn't allow any ankle motion during the gait cycle. At initial contact with that solid AFO, the ground force is passing anterior to the hip joint and Jonathan needs to fire whatever available hip extensors he has to slow that down. You can assist him in this, in this function by keeping your stance flexion resistance high to minimize the chance of knee flexion co collapse in loading response. But we want to optimize walking efficiency and the C-brace allows you to have approximately 20 degrees like a human knee does during that period of gait. It's important to keep your acoustic feedback turned on during the early trial. If your rate of knee flexion in loading response is too quick, then the client won't be able to achieve an extension moment consistently during their stance trials. Some steps, the client will reach an extension moment and they'll have free swing phase and you'll hear your audible beep. On other steps, the client won't reach that extension, won't hit that extension moment. There'll be no audible, no audible beep and the, and the leg will swing through with resisted flexion. So how do we reduce knee flexion moment? We must allow controlled ankle plantar flexion. We now have a large collection of orthoses that allow that. The neuro swing, next gear tango and Becker triple action allow far more plantar flexion in loading response than your PDE. They also allow far more controlled ankle dorsiflexion than your PDE. But can the PDE provide enough plantar flexion in loading response depending on the stiffness of the spring that you've chosen? Will ankle motion affect the coronal control of Jonathan's ankle? Will the lateral malleolus be exposed to potential breakdown if we were to use an articular ankle design? And which tibial configuration will I choose? Let's have a look at initial walking trials on flat terrain, slopes and stairs. With Jonathan with his two crutches, Again, that solid AFO, GRAFO walking cast continues to give him excessive knee flexion in loading response. Even with the stance flexion resistance quite high on level surfaces, the knee flexes with too much velocity for him to generate a consistent extension moment. On ramp descent, the, st the stance flexion resistance um, prevents the knee from collapsing. And the standout feature of the C-brace is that it allows knee flexion under load on stair and ramp descent. It, allow, it allows a reciprocal gait pattern in these conditions. Here Jonathan from Otterbock is supporting us in Jonathan's C-brace walking cast. And he's giving him guidance on te proper technique to allow him to, to, descend, to descend stairs effectively. The C-brace still has its deficits, as you can see. Even with grade two plus hip flexors, he can't generate enough knee flexion on stair ascent. And the leg comes up as a basic locked leg and he must step up to that particular step that he's stepping to. No knee flexion assistance on stair ascent, but unparalleled knee flexion under load. After half an hour of walking, here Jonathan's already learnt to use the knee flexion under load. Following the successful C-brace walking cast trial, Jonathan was funded for an eight week trial of the C-brace. The C-brace was fully manufactured as a definitive orthosis. 
and a loaner knee joint was rented for an eight week period from Otto Bock. The client trained with his neurophysio twice a week and the tibial section incorporated a category three 300 mil PDE spring. The PDE spring provided subtle ankle plantar flexion when it deflected posteriorly in loading response. The PDE springs provided controlled dorsiflexion from the majority of stance when it deflects anteriorly. Controlled dorsiflexion is crucial for generating a knee extension moment in the C brace. If optimally timed, it allows knee flexion in the C brace to occur after heel off. In late double support, the PDE spring then deflects posteriorly and provides rapid plantar flexion for push off. The C brace allows knee flexion under load it then extends through mid stance and then is allowed to flex to approximately 60 degrees, 65 degrees of knee flexion in swing. The PDE in the category three allowed Jonathan to have controlled ankle plantar flexion in loading response. It controlled the rate of dorsiflexion through stance phase and then provided rapid plantar flexion in late stance. Slope descent requires the use of a more flexible PDE spring, but the PDE cannot provide normal ankle plantar flexion range on stair and ramp descent. Optimal PDE stiffness and therefore dorsiflexion control on flat terrain should not be sacrificed to allow plantar flexion on, on ramp and stair descent. The client clinician can control stance flexion resistance on stair and ramp descent through the app to give the client more knee stability and to negate the external knee flexion moment if insufficient plantar flexion is allowed in the orthosis. Outcome measures were captured at baseline at the end of the eight week period. Jonathan showed a 27% improvement in timed up and go and a 31% improvement in the 10 meter walk test. He also had a 22 point increase in the Berg balance scale. And in 11 of the 16 outcome measures in the ABC scale, he showed increased confidence in those measures. We have extensively used the PDE in CAFOs now. We have had over 100 CAFO fittings using the PDE. We've used the PDE in a stri straight lock CAFO, a, a lock knee in 20 degrees with the EMAG active Neurotronic and C-Brace. And we also make alternate foot sections for clients who wish to wear variable heel height shoes. Thank you for joining us in the last education session in the Neuromuscular Orthotics Virtual Lounge. Please join us for live question and answer by following the link below.